Alright, we're back with another video for you today. I've got Dahlia here with me. So we're gonna do a video on the most iconic feminine fragrances. They are, they are iconic. There are many iconic fragrances. We're counting on you to tell us in the comments which iconic fragrances we didn't include. These are 10. These are 10. With one honorable mention. With one bonus option, yes. They, these are 10 iconic women's fragrances. So if you want to find out what they are, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. This is Dahlia. How many of you are into classic uh, feminine fragrances? Let us know. Put a comment down so we can find out. We're going to just r jump right into this, right? I think we should also have the disclaimer that these are considered feminine fragrances and marketed to women, but anybody can wear anything. Absolutely. Yes. So we're going to start off first with uh, Kelly, not Kelly Kalesh, what am I saying? Kalesh from Hermes. They have a Kelly fragrance or Kelly Kalesh fragrance. Are you familiar with Kalesh? I'm actually not at all. Um, I'm, I'm liking the sound of it. So here is Kalesh. Uh, it features, uh, well I should say, it's created by Guy Robert, launched in 1961, and it features notes of aldehydes, oak moss, iris, ylang ylang, sandalwood, cypress, rose, gardenia, vetiver, neroli, bergamot. A lot of stuff happening there. I get a lot of ylang ylang and bergamot and aldehydes. I think it's pretty much an aldehyde bomb for me. Very citrusy. Do you think it's a little bit similar to Chanel Number no. 5 in that? You don't get the similarities between the aldehydes between those and this? No. You don't? Okay. I don't. Um, but I've worn Chanel Number no. 5 quite a bit. And this is, the citrus is throwing me off. It's Interesting. making it a very different kind of a... I haven't really worn Chanel Number no. 5. I haven't worn this one either. <laughs> I've worn, um, I mean this is new to me. It doesn't remind me of Chanel Number no. 5 at all. But you can't get the connection with the aldehydes? Because Aldehydes has such a distinct smell. It's so like, it stands out out of all the fragrances. Like it's like right there, like bubbles everywhere. Yes, agreed. Mm -hmm. But Chanel number no. five to me is more about the kind of musk. Um, like there's a, well, we'll. We're gonna get to Chanel number no. five. I was just five. gonna say, like spoilers. Maybe obviously. we'll talk about it together. Yeah. But to me, this reminds me of Chanel number no. five. Yes, they're not similar. And I think the reason it reminds me of Chanel number no. five is because of the aldehydes. There's something about this one as well that's a little like a, um, like a like a what do you call them? A mixologist at a cocktail bar did something with like mm. like a like a cocktail. Yeah, there's something about this that's very high end beverage. Okay. Well, this is I think. Hermes's answer to Chanel number no. five. That's what I think. Sure, they don't smell alike, but I, I get I, I get similarities. Aldehydes. I mean, this is the 1960s. Mm -hmm. Aldehydes were much more common in fragrance back in the day. Mm -hmm. So lots more fragrances used them than than now. I mean, I think now like uh, Rien by Etat Libre d'Orange is the one That's that comes aldehydic. to mind. It, yeah. well, extremely. Yeah. But I wouldn't say that they're similar because they both have Oh, aldehydes. those are totally different. Yeah. But, but there is a kind of similarity in there. It's the aldehyde that reminds me of it. So, okay. all right, let's move on to Guerlain's Chalamar. This Love. one, this one right this here. Is, this is the amber. This is... The vanilla. It's, well, it's, it, if, if, this is the reference amber. This is what I think of every time I smell a new amber from a, like a, a modern amber from a brand. It's, I'm always, this is what I am comparing it to. Mm, okay. Um, can we have a strip? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. For, well, that sounded. <laughs> can we have a strip? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, dun, dun. Oh, no, no. Not so this launched in 1925, created by Jacques Guerlain, featuring vanilla, iris, bergamot, floral notes, tonka this beans, the, This was the bad girl rose fragrance jasmine. of its day. I'm it sorry. It was? To, yeah. You think? It's a beautiful bottle too. No, I know it is. Yeah. I mean, it's like, there were, there's famous quotes about like, no smoking and no Shalimar or something like, signs like that. Oh, for wow. The flapper girls. Interesting. There's something about this that initially you might think vinyl shower curtain. There is that plasticiness. But forget, it's amazing. It's gorgeous. It's. This is the. The. The uh, eau de toilette version. There's multiple versions. Mm -hmm. Eau de parfum, which should be much concentrated. Extrait would be even further concentrated. But I've only experienced the, um, the eau de toilette. And then, of course, I have the Millicene Tonka, which is super fantastic. Mm. But. 
Just the classic. Like if you think that opium is the classic amber, that is much sweeter than this. This has like a, a drier kind of amber. I think it's the tonka beans in there and, mm -hmm. the, and the iris together create for a dry powderiness. I love this. You do? I love this. And, and this is by it? like the man, the myth himself, right? Jacques Guerlain? Jacques Guerlain. This is really good. This is... Really good. This is... It does remind me of my grandmother's bathroom though. I can't comment on that. <laughs> But I would she just, had all her toiletries there, and I could smell her perfume. To the people, do not sleep on this. It is it is an iconic fragrance for a reason. Well, the next one is very iconic to me. This one's polarizing. This one, patchouli, patchouli bomb here with the Mugler Angel. But it's a different patchouli. It's yeah. a very, very sweety kind of gourmandy. Mm -hmm. What are the yeah. notes? This is 1992, and it's created by Olivier Cresp, and it features patchouli, dark chocolate, caramel, honey, vanilla, cotton candy, tonka, amber, musk, coconut. A lot of stuff happening. Should we spray? Right. By the way, I the have new, one job. <laughs> by the way, the new Angel Elixir is so disappointing. So, so disappointing. They went with a complete new perfumer. They didn't even reach out to Olivier Crest to create Angel Elixir. And now it's a floral bomb, basically. This is uh, amazing, I think. I love this. It's very sweet. Sweet and candied. It's very sweet. The cotton candy really comes through, actually. This one also, the trail for this is super amazing. The only reason I learned about this is because of the trail. Every woman would be walking around with this stuff on. My brother, like my brother dated a girl who wore this, and then they broke up, and he had a sample of it that a fan blew the scent of the angel. <laughs> and, you know, well, you're romantic when you're a teenager. Um, yeah, it's I. Uh, the cotton candy comes through. Yeah. For me, more than the patchouli, but there is a DNA that goes across um, the Mugler line that has this very specific treatment of patchouli that's like super distinctive too. Mm. No. To yeah, this I think is one of the most iconic fragrances. T to me, there's a special place for that because not only did I love smelling it on people, I've sprayed that stuff on me. I love it. You've worn it for years. I've, I've worn a lot of men's fragrances, and I, I've, I've, yeah, I've worn that one too. Well, it's, I love it. It's, I don't think, I mean, it is a classic and it is was marketed to women, but I think it's pretty unisex. I think so too. Mm. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, going to the house of uh, Dior. This is Diorissimo. Actually, if you guys haven't watched it, Dahlia and I have a video on the channel from a long time ago, almost five years ago. We discussed Dior. Diorissimo, Diorella, Diorama, Diorescence in that video. Mm -hmm. Four of the di different Dior, uh, Dior something fragrances. But I think Diorissimo, Diorissimo is amazing. I think it's one of the best Lily of the Valley I think fragrances. it is iconic. I think it, it's very like Grace Kelly. Um, Grace Kelly, Fred Astaire. Ginger Rogers danced on air. <laughs> Did, We've been having Madonna moments like Yeah, we, heard, we went to the coffee shop and heard Madonna's uh, Open Your Heart, and we were talking about the video, and then we've been singing And then we were talking about the Like a Prayer video. We were talking about the Like a Prayer also video. Also iconic, <laughs> but for different reasons than these fragrances. Now, this one, Diorissimo, originally was created by Edmond Rudnitska, later reformulated by Francois de Maché. So 1956 originally, then 2009, and it's Lily of the Valley, Jasmine, Ilang Ilang. So for me, it smells like fresh lily of the valley. Mm -hmm. And I have a dabber from the 50s or 60s with the little houndstooth. Um, oh. And it's very pure, clean, kind of sweet, soapy. Um, and it's like feminine without being too girlish, if that makes sense. Um, very, see it's that. very pretty. Do you consider some of these fragrances to be grandma? Because I get that all the time. That's, I feel like we should talk about that. Um, yes, but. Yeah. Yes, but. Like, you have, with many of these iconic fragrances, when you first, like, smell them on a strip or, you know, hold the bottle to your nose, there are things like aldehydes and there's like this huge complexity in a lot of the fragrance construction that is not modern. This this kind of iconic fragrance needs your skin as this, the magic ingredient that pulls it all together and makes yeah, it yours. Yeah, totally. And when people talk about it being like grandma, like, I, I mean, I've said it myself, so I can't even be mad about it, but like... I just mentioned my grandmother's bathroom. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, but that's that's very specific though. I mean, bathroom and fragrance. I know it's an eau de toilette, but... Mm. 
I, I think give it a chance. Like, it, you, if you have the opportunity to spray something on your skin and like give it a second to warm up and smell it on your skin, it's very different. The end. Yeah. yeah. This lecture has now concluded. Okay. <laughs> we can move on. But no, I think Dior Diorissimo still smells great today, even with its current reformulation by Francois de Marche. So if you guys like Lily of the Valley, definitely check it out. And I think it's a very beautiful spring fragrance. It smells like spring to me. Mm -hmm. Very green floral. Mm. So moving on to the house of Cacherel, it's Lulu Cacherel. This, I think, was one of my favorite bottles when it had first come out. The blue bottle that kind of looked like a genie bottle. Now they've changed it to a much more simplistic bottle right here. Uh, it is also under L'Oreal Cacherel, so it has, been re it has been reformulated to death. But it's definitely an iconic bottle to me. It's, it's yes. Created by Jean Guichard. It's plums, ylang ylang, incense, vanilla, cinnamon, iris, violet, anise, orris, benzoin, sandal, with lots of stuff here. What do you get from it? I love it. I you love look? it. It's, um, but as we mentioned in another video that we filmed, um, I do love violet. I think the anise gives this really good balance, even though it has some of those more gourmand notes like vanilla and benzoin and cinnamon, it isn't too sweet. Even with like the fruits like plum and ylang ylang, it's very balanced and that violet kind of shines through in a way that is, I love an 80s violet though. You do? Love. No, this is definitely a big bad floral bouquet with fruitiness and some spices and some, you know, warmer notes and woods. I don't love it as much as you do. I just wanted the bottle because I just think it's the most beautiful bottle. I don't know, I love the color. It's very striking and my eyes go right to it. Mm. I mean, the original bottle was much prettier. This is the more simplistic, but for nostalgia region reasons, uh, I gotta have this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Lulu Cacherel. I'll find you the original bottle. Oh. And you can give me that one because I really like it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so moving on to the house of, uh, oh, did we mention when that came out? That came out in 87, the Cacherel Lulu, and it was created by Jean Guichard. It's, a, it's very, 80s. Yeah. 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 yeah, but, the, yeah. Do you think it's kind of similar to, we're going back to Cacherel Dior's Poison, which also used yep. uh, uh, the plum note? Mm -hmm. You think it was? Mm -hmm. I need to get a bottle of Poison to compare. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need it anyway, just yeah, for reference. Just to, you know, just to have a reference. All right, moving on to the house of Robert Piguet. It's Fracas from 1948, and it's created by Germain Cellier. Mm. So this is the ultimate tuberose bomb. Yeah, this is a reference white floral. This is also very bubblegummy, and to me, I don't know why, it's pink. I always associate bubblegum and pink together, and it's kind of a given that it's bubblegummy to me because it's pink and bubblegum, <laughs> so I don't know. Well, but there's a lot going on. It isn't, there is a lot going on. It isn't just a white floral. There's some fruity notes as well. Um, and here, you go ahead and tell them the notes. So this is tuberose, jasmine, gardenia, peach, orange, blossom, hyacinth, green leaves, musk, amber, narcissus. It's beautiful. You love it? It's beautiful. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. I, I remember reading that, like, Madonna loved this and wore this, and then her she did a, pr a fragrance in the 90s that was very white floral that I can't think of the name of. Was it Truth or Dare? Well, she did a fragrance uh, in the latter part of the 2000s. It was called Truth or Dare. She did two of them. I actually gave Truth or Dare to my mom and my um, sister. My mom really loved it for some reason, but this one does remind me of it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, super. This is the 1940s. Yeah, um, 1948. So if you think about, I, I think cigarette smoking was more common, <laughs> wearing furs, um, Dressing up was more common. But I think there were a lot of other smells going on and this needed to have enough of a backbone to stand up to everything else. Um, that's how I think of it. Um, it's, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. But it's very bubblegummy to me. I don't know where I get the bubblegum from. I think tuberose generally has that bubblegumminess. Maybe white flowers do sometimes. Remember the, the fragrance it, it from... It might be the peach also. The peach? But remember the Frederick Mall, uh, the one we did a video on together, the orange blossom Neroli one that's the bad kid or whatever. Oh yeah, Salgos. So, yeah, that has a bubblegum note in there. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we are talking about iconic feminine fragrances and we're gonna probably go to the most iconic. Uh, this is Chanel number no. five uh, in the Eau de Parfum concentration, we not the also, Parfum. We should also say, um, I arbitrarily made a rule and said we could only do one per brand. That's a good rule. I do that sometimes too. Yeah. Um, it's a good rule. I, yeah, I, I kind of... Wherever it goes. <laughs> I, 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 I put my weight behind that one. So, without 
overcomplicating it. There are many iconic fragrances from Chanel. There are many iconic fragrances from Dior. Yeah. And so we we had a rule. We had a rule, yes. One. So this to me love it. Is it it's not as uh, citrusy as the Kalesh, going back to the Kalesh. This is it's warmer and amberier. This one is definitely fresher. I have an eau de cologne that I wear quite a bit, and it smells really different than the eau de parfum. This you is have. current formulation. Ah. So maybe you have a vintage? Um, well, yes, I do. But the Chanel Number no. 5 came out in 1921, created by Ernest Beau, Aldehydes, Iris, Sandalwood, Ylang Ylang, Jasmine, Vanilla, Neroli, Oak Moss, a lot of stuff. I believe it was very well known for having a civet note. And um, that's not really a thing anymore. This formulation that you have smells a lot more like Kalesh than the formulation I have. Oh, there, I guess I wasn't wrong. No. And once again, it smells like my gra uh, grandmother's bathroom. She had all her toiletries there and her Chanel and Shalimar and... I don't have any memory of my grandmother's bathroom. Well, it's like always smelled like perfume in that bathroom. <laughs> Well, actually, one of my grandmas had this very specific brand of soap called Hawaii. Oh. That smelled very strong. Okay. So I do remember that. Okay. But that is not what we're talking about today. We're talking about iconic <laughs> fragrances. Back to the lecture at hand. What would we like to say? Um, the iconic picture of Marilyn with the bottle. Or Brad Pitt with that video. For Chanel number five. You never saw that? I don't think so. Oh my god. I he, was that, he was promoting Chanel number no. 5. We'll, we'll Google. We'll, we'll, don't worry, internet. I'll find it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's very iconic. Iconic. Probably one of the most iconic uh, fragrances for women. Buku de iconic. But this one, actually, you guys should go and watch a video of Dahlia and I talking about this mm. with one of our favorite classic perfumers, Bernard Chant. Obsessed. Aromatics Elixir and also Aramis 900 smelling similar. Well, go, Aramis go. itself. Yeah, Aramis. The aftershave. Yeah. It's so good. This is a beautiful patchouli. Well, this is kind of like the latest version. It's so watered down. <laughs> this doesn't smell like what I remembered. <laughs> it's, um, okay, so it came out in 1971. It's Bernard Chant. Love the guy. He did some amazing fragrances. Worked at IFF. But it features oak moss, chamomile, patchouli, aldehydes, incense, vetiver, clary sage, coriander, carnation, rose, geranium. Anything else? Lots of things. So many things. So many things. It's been reformulated. I have a scent memory with this one. When I was very young, in my before I hit the teens, I was like seven, eight, nine. There was a lady that wore this fragrance, and I could not get enough of her smell because it's the oak moss and patchouli and everything. It's just always, always. When I smell this, I gave you a vintage bottle of this. You did, but this is the mo most current. I don't know where that is right now. I've lost it. I keep losing fragrances. There's so much out there. Mm. But um, I should, I should look it up. But um, you, you like this? I, I prefer the original formulation. This is pretty watered down. It um, It is less of the patchouli, which is kind of the point for me. But, yeah. Iconic. It's very iconic, though. Iconic. Many, many scent memories with that one. And then moving on to another Bernard Chant created fragrance, but this time going to the house of Halston. It's Halston by Halston, the original feminine penis bottle fragrance. <laughs> I, can't, I can't argue. I can't argue. <laughs> Well, if you guys want to find out more, go watch the Halston uh, miniseries on Netflix. I always, whenever I think about Halston, I think about um, Bianca Jagger, who apparently rode into Studio 54, like, on a horse. I've, I've seen a photo like that. To make an entrance. She rode an actual horse into a disco club. <laughs> I mean, that's, I, th th that is iconic. Yeah. In that in that host, in the mini series on Netflix, they changed the sex of the perfumer. This is created by Bernard Chant, but they had a woman perfumer making the fragrance in the, in the mini series. So I don't know why they changed it, but I feel like Bernard Chant created something amazing. It's he's he's an amazing perfumer. I, I absolutely love that guy's fragrances. Agree. His yeah. use of patchouli is inspired. Yeah. This but is great. 1975, it features oak moss, amber, carnation, vetiver, incense, patchouli, sandalwood, orris, jasmine, cedar, peach, melons. Man, they had like a whole pot of notes in fragrances back then, and now they just list one, two, three. It's amazing. It's very nice. And, and even this one, uh, with uh, the fact that it's under Revlon, uh, it's been butchered to death. I think out of all the Halston fragrances under Revlon, 
including the men's, I think the woman's still smells pretty good. The men's has been so watered down, mm. so diluted, it's kind of boring. Mm. Anyway, very iconic though. Iconic. Yeah. The bottle's iconic. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, going to the house of Estee Lauder, we've got Youth Do, this one right here. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this? Iconic. Iconic? Iconic. It's incense. Um, I think it was originally a bath oil, and it was marketed oh. as a fragrance that women buy for themselves, as opposed to, I mean, classic advertising for perfumery or whatever was, hey man, buy this for your lady. And this was, mm, mm, buy this for yourself. Uh, <laughs> which I mean, yes. Um, go ahead. Yeah, Before can you... we get a strip? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Stop it. No, I will not strip for your camera. <laughs> Give me a strip. Okay, so I don't know what it is about this fragrance, but it reminds me of Coca-Cola. E mm. There is something fizzy and uh, effervescent in here, but it's all holiday spices. Spices, aldehydes, narcissus, lavender, cloves, cinnamon, rose, Resins. incense, tolu balsam, peru balsam, oak moss, and 12,000 other ingredients. Mm -hmm. It's created by Josephine Catapano, and it was launched in 1953 mm -hmm. and still around today. Iconic. I think the bottle is beautiful. In, in, I have a tiny little dabber. You do? I do. It's super cute. And even though I'm saying it's, it smells like Coca-Cola, the, the juice looks like Coca-Cola. It's, um... <laughs> Don't drink it, though. Well, I think it's the combination of the aldehydes and the sweet resins and the spices. It's, it's, it's very luxurious. It's very... It's, it's one of these... It is iconic, and it's almost, like, overplayed. Not... It, it doesn't take away from how good it is. But even somebody who thinks they've never smelled it before, I feel like once they smell it, they're like, oh, because somebody wore it around you at some point. Because it's iconic. It's iconic. Super duper. There it is. And that's the last fragrance for you guys. Incorrect. Well, we have a bonus option, which comes after the uh, outro. There's an honorable mention. But what do you guys think about these fragrances? Uh, let us know. Uh, and also let us know what other feminine fragrances you consider iconic, put a comment down so we can find out. It doesn't necessarily have to be all old. We went with more classics here. We almost put a couple of much newer ones, but we kind of ran out of space with the top well, 10. Well, actually, what happened is we um, were looking at these as feminine, marketed, iconic fragrances. And there are other fragrances that we considered iconic, but they're more unisex. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't... I mean, even Feminite du Bois. Well, we didn't mention that one yet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me and follow Dahlia at the Perfume Dahlia uh, Instagram. And we'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Okay. I gave you a clue, but yeah, we do have one honorable mention. <laughs> it's Serge de Tens Feminité du Bois, launched in, two th well, it was originally launched in 1992 for Shiseido, brought back by um, um, Estee Lauder, what am I saying? Serge Lutens uh, for uh, Serge Lutens in uh, 2009. So it's a fragrance created by Christopher Sheldrake. Shall we sp spray it? We shall, we shall. Would you like a strip? I would like a strip. <laughs> Strip away. Too cold. So this to me, I, I gave a bottle of this to my mom one year and actually bought a bottle for myself as well. I, I like the whole cedar and plum combo. Um, my yeah. skin chemistry plays up the animalic nature of this. Um, so you like, can't wear this? No. Oh no. But it's cedar, plums, cloves, ginger, cinnamon, peach, violet, sandalwood, benzoin, musk, vanilla, ylang ylang, oranges, orange flower. I would love to have the original Shiseido bottle but I'm fine with this one. I think it's nice. Uh, there was a fragrance by Memo Paris also called La Courtier Latin, which totally reminded me of this. It got discontinued, but with that fragrance, they had amplified the cedar much louder, so it was much more of a woody fragrance, whereas here it's fruity and spicy. It's lovely on paper, but I can tell you that musk. Not a good one, huh? Well, it's not that it's not good. It's just too much for you. High impact. Mm. But yeah, um, if anybody has an idea of how this compares to the Shiseido version, put a comment down so we can find out. But other than that, as we said earlier, thanks so much for watching. Thank you. See you on another video very soon. Bye bye. Bye.